Well, hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, episode 10, double digits now, which is pretty exciting. So uh, <laughs> this episode is with Kim Doyle, and we are going to be talking about the keys to content marketing. My name is Kyle Van Dusen, and with me as always is Matt Siebert. How's it going this morning, Matt? It's going well. I, uh, I'm not a sick dog anymore, so... We missed you last week. Here That's I right. Am. <laughs> you were here in spirit, but I not. Was, I was. Person. I was running the stuff in the background, but uh, I was far too sick to show my face. If I remember right, I kind of held it together, but uh, that's probably up to opinion. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll take a poll. I don't think. Yeah, we'll take a poll at the end of this. I don't think um, Kim needs a whole lot of introduction. But for anybody on planet Earth that isn't familiar with Kim, Kim, why don't you give us a quick rundown, a uh, little bio intro to yourself before we get started? Um, all right, we'll make this super quick. So, you know, it tripped me out. I realized March will be 11 years I've been doing this online. Um, I thought I was going to be an information marketing millionaire, of course, by selling ebooks <laughs> at the beginning of my journey. Um, fell in love with WordPress, grabbed the name of the WordPress chick before I knew what I was doing. Ignorance truly was bliss. Um, I, I kind of got into doing websites. It was never my thing. I ended up hiring a team. I had an outsourcing company. Things shifted a lot for me when I launched my podcast in 2013, the, the, the WP Chick podcast. And it's just the relationships, the connections, the traffic to my site. I did some done for you podcasting services and then just sort of drew a line in the sand um, in 2017. I'm like, I'm done with, I want to go all in with content, tried a SaaS thing that started, failed. So <laughs> here we are, like all things content marketing. It's, it's like really my happy place. I love it. I believe in it. Live by everything is content. Just show up. Um, yeah, that's, that's my spiel. I've got two big kids, 21 and 18. So my life's a little bit easier sometimes. A little bit. Yeah. No, Matt's is the easiest. He's got no kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but he'll when he has kids. That's when you know it's funny. One of my best friends has like a ten year old and an eight year old, and I'm like, and we're the same age, right? I'm like, wow, my daughter will have kids by the time they're her age, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It's like every time you have a new kid, you reset the clock. So mine's reset to eighteen more years. So, mm -hmm. oh well, what are you gonna do? They're good most of the time. Most of the time, we need someone to take care of us when we get old. That's true. That's why I had the third one, because I'm not so sure about the first two. <laughs> so we're really putting all of our effort into the third child. I think we made all our mistakes. Love us already. the most. Yes, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, we better get down to business here. So, uh, you know, you you brought up your podcast, WP Chick Podcast. That was actually my first introduction to you uh, with ah, listening cool. to that when I first started uh, doing WordPress stuff. So shout out to that. And there's, uh, I'm sure that's still published everywhere and there's tons of good content on there. So uh, if you're looking for something else to listen to, go listen to um, some of those well, WP Chick podcast episodes. And of course you have new content as well. Well, I was going to say it's the same feed. So okay, I just, there you go. It's the Kim Doyle show, so I just changed the feed, but you, all the episodes are still there. Okay. I was like, well, I'm not losing this audience. <laughs> start at episode one and just uh, work your way through it. I think there's quite a few you'll have to get through. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, you know, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, most of the people in this group and this community and our audience are website designers and website developers. And I think we all understand the importance of content marketing and it's something we preach to our customers a lot. And when we're building a site, you know, the customers come to you and they don't understand how the, this whole thing works. And they'll say, you know, I want a bunch of traffic from Google and we'll say, oh great, you know, we need to have some kind of content strategy. And we know that's important, um, but we're always busy doing those things and we forget about a content strategy for ourselves. Um, and it's, you know, we don't practice what we preach a lot of times. So you kind of fell on the other end of the spectrum when you were building websites, you were more into the content end of it. So I think where, where I've gotten stuck a lot of times is coming up with ideas for, for what kind of content I could publish that would be useful. Um, and then being able to repurpose some of that content. So I don't write one blog post that takes me a whole day, publish it one day, and then I need to start all over again. So First of all, what kinds what kinds of things do you think are important for web, website designers and developers to think about as far as creating content for themselves? Uh, the first thing that I would really do is uh, dial in your about page. So many people do this whole, you know, I've been designing websites for this long and this long, and I'll get you the link, Kyle. There's a great guide on um, 
God, what is it? it? Copy with a K. Copywriting. What is this? I, I'm drawing a blank. But there was a great guest post and a guide. And there's literally like kind of templated, like imagine if, so the point is to get your reader into thinking about themselves when they're reading your about page, right? Mm -hmm. Only because, I mean, you guys know it's one of the top click through pages. And I think we're really at this point where content marketing is marketing. It's not optional anymore. So I would start with that because it's, it, and work through it, take your time with it. I mean, I remember, you know, my first blog post was like a heinous paragraph. It sounds like a robot wrote it. And it was like, <laughs> there's no images. It was just, it's, it's funny. Um, but all of this takes practice. And, and even though it might not be a comfort level initially, start with the about page. The next thing, this to me is the most obvious for developers, designers, web agencies, whatever, is talk about your clients. Like I would literally tell the story. Every time you complete a project, tell the story of start to finish. And you can do it in your voice if, if you have that relationship with a client. I would do a little bit of an interview because then they're going to go share this article. Look at our company, you know, and you can do updates to that. So to me, that is the easiest type of content because often what happens, especially in the WordPress space, is people start creating content about WordPress. Well, your clients don't necessarily care. That's not going to, you know, <laughs> Kyle, to your point, in, in a group room where it's like it gets a little bit incestuous with your friends right. and we're all talking and sharing, but it's like that's not drawing more clients. And so I think those case studies are the absolute easiest thing to do because you're not talking about yourself. You can share and take the time to do it. Like I get the whole taking a day to write a post, right. um, but there is sort of a, a magic that happens in that too. The more you do it, the more you enjoy doing it. But I would I would absolutely start with client case, stu case studies. Even if you were to take and try not to do it in a, here's the branding we did, here's this. Talk talk like you would be telling a friend. Like if, if a client came up and said, look, we worked with this client and they're a potential client, just tell the story. Like I always give the example, I'm kind of a movie nut, like it's my escape for binging TV. So, but like when The Greatest Showman came out, I was goofy. I friggin' love that movie. I have the soundtrack memorized. I could have convinced anybody to go see that movie because I cared and I had fun and it made me feel good, right? So that's how you tell the stories about your clients and how excited you were. Like, Kyle, I watched your sharing of, was it a veteran site you just, mm -hmm. you did? Okay. Yeah. I mean, that is a story in and of itself. I mean, you could take that and pull out pieces and even just pull out updates to, a, a story about what the new site has done for them or highlighting a veteran. Here's another example. Sorry, I think the coffee's totally kicking in now. So <laughs> You gotta quit mainlining it. You could just drink it. It's okay. <laughs> I've only had one, but the problem is like, look at the size of them. Um, <laughs> the other thing, here's a great example. I don't remember what I was listening to. It was a podcast though. And it was, I don't know if it's plastic surgeons or doctors, but what they did is they started a golf podcast because they knew that that's an affluent community, right? So. And, and I don't, I didn't ever listen to it, but so there's a lot of different things you can do in alignment. So the veteran site and doing that and caring about that, there's a sort of a moral ethical, not ethical, but moral value element to, to having them as clients. That's going to resonate with potential clients too. Right. And sure. if it doesn't, then you're like, sweet, you're not my client anyways. But the whole case studies thing that that's all I would do. It's so much easier to talk about somebody else. I did that. Um, like I started on Facebook in 2008, kind of went away, was kind of half-assing it. And then I, when I got committed, I'm like, all right, well, I'm still kind of finding my footing. It was, I would say, before I launched the podcast. So I'd been like online maybe five years. And I just started sharing other people's stuff. And you become this massive trusted resource too. So even in your communities, if you're doing local stuff, highlight local businesses, even if you didn't do the website. That's all you got to do. And tell the stories about your community. So I would absolutely start with case studies besides doing the before and after pull your voice in. Kyle, you're pretty witty. You're pretty funny. You know, so like I, what? I, I might be subjective. I think you're funny. Um, it's very subjective. You should ask my wife. <laughs> yeah. But you know, she gets all sides of you. So, True. but the public doesn't. So, but it's those little pieces of pulling your personality in and that's where people start resonating with you. Does that help? Yeah. yeah no, true. it's super. <clears throat> no, and I would, I would uh, you know, go back to that whole, like, you know, excitement sells, and it really does. That was my, my very first job uh, was working retail, and my manager at the time, you know, he trained me how to, uh, how to make sales, and that was one of his biggest points, is that if you're excited about something, the, the customer's going to be excited as well. You know, like, if you, can, if you can put that onto them, 
Like mm-hmm. you've you've made your sale. Like talk like you're excited, and it's it's like a yawn. You know, it's it's contagious. <laughs> it totally is. I not to get woo woo on you guys. Like I really believe in energy, and it is infectious, right? It's kind of like why do we, you know, when somebody starts laughing hysterically. Like you don't even have to be there. So Jody, my partner at the planner, shared this video where she and a friend were in the car asking Siri how long it would take to get somewhere. And Siri interpreted as how long does it take to die? <laughs> they <laughs> were like crying and laughing so hard. And listen to me, I wasn't even there, but I know right. it, like I'd put myself in that place. And so oftentimes there's this separation of, you know, and I think we're shifting. I really feel the marketplace, this separation of, personable and energy and having fun and feeling good. But, you know, I did this in the uh, Creators Nation where I talk about like, what are your your kind of core content desires, right? So you, you look at that, not desires, um, but for me, I want people to feel better for having engaged with my content, whether they're entertained, they're inspired, they've learned something. I want them to leave saying that was totally worth my time to read or listen or engage or watch. So that's sort of like at the core of everything I do. And we really are shifting, um, and you guys just jump in because I'm going a million miles a minute. You're good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but um, I, I read this article last night, and it, and I shared it in another group, Kyle. But it was talking about the the rising cost of Facebook ads. But the point behind it was talking about bro marketing, which is I would say, funnel hackers, right? That whole thing. Right. So this bro marketing of tactics and and strategies, and so for for that place, the cost is going up, right? And so you look at th- this shift and everything and it's like, oh, okay, we're really getting back to this place of sort of the psychographics, meaning, you know, you hear about demographics, that this was the point I was bringing up. So she talks about your avatar, great, you've defined your avatar. So let's say it's a female who's 35 years old. Well, what about the female who's 35? Forget the, because we usually do the income, she likes Starbucks or she does this and you right. name the person, right? Well, what about the 35 year old who fits all those, but her mother just died? or the 35 year old who fits all those and just got a promotion at work. So there's all of these sort of psychographics that fit into this. So that BS is not gonna work. It's stopping, it's just, it's not working anymore because people are seeing through it. And so the benefit is for, especially for web devs, like just tell tell the stories, talk about people, be excited for your clients, be, you know, get excited about projects. I mean, again, because I wasn't a developer, it was always fun to get on the phone with the potential and see the possibilities and all that kind of stuff. That always felt really good where it ended at the end based on <laughs> the client doing what they're supposed to six of one. Right. But that's an easy story to tell, like why you believe in the client you're working with. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's something I, I definitely need to put in practice because you know, the kind of bad example you gave at the beginning of like starting to write articles about how things work on WordPress is something I'm totally guilty of. So I think, I mean, I'm obviously not alone, but um, trying to have more of of your own personality and your own voice in there, I think is really important now, especially, you know, the world is so connected now and people have a million options. I mean, uh, any one of my customers could have hired one of a million different developers, but they chose me. Uh, my portfolio is not better than everyone's in the world. You know, my prices weren't better than everything in the world. They chose me more, more based on me. So trying to probably get that out there and have, uh, people who haven't interacted with me yet being able to see that is important. I'm just using me as an example, but for all of us, you know, um, trying to, trying to be more personable like that is probably very important. It, it feels like it's getting more important, you know, day by day. Well, don't you think it's like the only differentiating factor we have is yeah, who we yeah. are, right? And so, and and it is, I, I do think, you know, I started watching um, Halt and Catch Fire on Netflix. Have you guys seen that? Oh, yeah. I haven't. Okay. So it's, it's about building a PC to compete with IBM, Kyle, if you haven't seen it, way back in the 80s, right? And it's so funny because that that whole kind of space in business is coming down a little bit, right? And so... I think you absolutely have to pull your personality into it. And it's funny because I don't know, you know, it's like there's this fear of like showing up and being yourself and, but that's why people don't do it. Cause who wants to go write static, like Microsoft regurgitated content from circa 1995, right? It's like right. boring, boring, boring. And the other thing is that it's not going to be easy at first. It's not going to necessarily feel comfortable if it's not something you've been doing, but 
it, I, I swear, if I could do anything for anybody, it would be to just get to the point where you enjoy the mastery of whatever you're doing. The rest starts to fall into place. It was when I started really focusing on email marketing. I'm like, crickets for a good month. And I would maybe email once a month. I'm like, I'm going to do it every day, almost daily. And I just had fun, you know, and then it started compounding. And so that's what content does. And so for web devs, it's like, and it's okay. I wouldn't say don't write about WordPress or don't write about your tools, but can you flip it to, for your clients? Why I always recommend this lead gen plugin or what this plugin did for this client and why we continue to use it in our stack or whatever. Yeah. And another thing that I learned from you and, and your, your Facebook group is amazing. So if there's anybody in, in our group, that's not incestuous into your group, they need <laughs> to go uh, join us. Um, but you know, you, you use the phrase and the hashtag and everything, everything is content. And it was, you know, I understood what the words meant, but it didn't ever, it didn't click in my brain right away. And then, uh, I don't remember what happened, but I remember telling you, uh, or mentioning it to you that something had clicked like, man, you know, you can almost turn just about anything into content. And it, you know, I, I wrote a little, uh, note to myself to write a article or maybe do a video or something. It was just killing me this last week. And there was this new restaurant that opened up like 15 minutes away and we've been wanting to try it. It's been there maybe, I don't know, two months now. Right. So, uh, we're like, okay, should we go there this weekend? So I start looking it up online. They have a Google My Business listing, but there's no menu, no prices, no nothing. They have a Facebook, but that it's like a picture of a, a brisket and it says, we cater, and then that's it. <laughs> like, no phone number, no, no nothing. To whom? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I was just like, these people need so much help. Like, you know, we did end up going, but, you know, most people might not probably go you know, when they can't find the information they're looking for and how easy is it to post a picture of your menu on your Facebook? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so I was just thinking about that as a post and I'm like, that's not boring at all. I, I might need to do that. <laughs> well, and you know what? I've kind of, I wouldn't say I've flipped. I'm going a little bit deeper with the hashtag everything is content because it's, as I've really started looking at where I'm going in 2019 and and I did this whole thing. I was talking about, you know, I deleted like 3,100 subscribers from my email list. And so I want my content to be working for me all the time, meaning I'm going to take the time to do as many, I don't mean as many like on a roll, but a couple, a quarter epic long posts that I can then promote the hell out of it. I will send paid traffic. I'll repurpose it. I'll chop it up, whatever I have to do. And that's kind of more of an experiment for me, but it's like, it's, it's this idea of the customer journey and bringing people in and them getting used to you and having that process. So the second they read a post, they opt in. And then I've got massive automation with an offer within 30 days. Like that stuff has to happen. That's a huge priority for me, but the everything is content. So I, I think like I look at it that one, if you start thinking that way and you start looking, you find it everywhere, <laughs> right? And you kind sure. of start practicing. And I do think publishing something is better than publishing nothing. Um, but it's contextual, you know, I think that behind the scenes, the stories, the fun stuff, <clears throat> you know, like yesterday I shared, I ordered Mike Killen's book. That's great. I mean, okay, take a picture of a book. That's not unique, but that's great for stories and Instagram because people want to do business with you. I really just, I wish I had a crystal ball. I swear. I think we're getting to this, you know, quality, true fans, forget vanity metrics. I mean, that's garbage and it hurts you in the long run. Yeah. I agree. And, you know, especially like solo <clears throat> businesses, solo people like me in a business, having 20,000 subscribers probably doesn't do me any good. I'd rather have, you know, 50 really dedicated people than a mm -hmm. bunch of people that aren't reading anything. You know what I mean? It just, I, I couldn't handle a huge volume of work like that anyway. So it wouldn't do me a whole lot of good. You know, one thing that I've struggled with, and I, and I know others have too, um, in fact, I can't remember who I was having a conversation with this about, but it's trying to be consistent about posting stuff. So I started back in like June posting some blog posts once a week, and I did it for maybe eight to 10 weeks straight. Mm -hmm. And I didn't post anything for like three months. Um, so talk, talk a little bit about consistency and why that's important, because I, I know I've heard you talk about that already. And then um, we need to talk about... Um, what you have going on with your content creators planner. And I think those two things work in well together. So uh, I'll just hand it back off to you and the coffee. Okay. I, I should be drinking more water. Um, you know, and here's the, I'm going to be super honest to you. Like my consistency this year has sucked <laughs> because I just, life has gone sideways. I've had, I had some really challenging stuff going on 
and you just kind of let it go. The difference too, I think I'm hoping is that after doing this so long, I had, you know, I had an audience and all of that. And so, um, and I never went away. I think the consistency piece, like the admin bar is consistent. You're totally consistent with this, you know? And so it's finding that thing that you will be consistent with. The podcast for me will get back on track, but that really pushed me into doing it. Or when I was sort of doing the all, almost daily emails, even emailing two or three times a week was so much better, you know? And, and so it's finding that one thing, that one thing that you can do. And I just, I don't know what it is about this space where we have zero patience. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're not gonna hit publish and magic is gonna happen. It's, it's the compounding effect of anything else. It's, you know, and so it's, if people can start shifting that, but find the one thing that you can do. Even if you're gonna say to yourself, I'm gonna post one thing on my Facebook page, Facebook is not gonna get rid of business pages. I think that the algorithms changed all that good stuff, but they know that they can't lose that market either. So I do think something's gonna change. I think it's more about engagement. So even if, let's say you've got a post or you you know, you know hadn't written in three months, if you've got those queued through you know, missing letter, whatever you're using, you've got that stuff going out, are you engaging? Make sure to go back and look. I mean, that is hugely important. <clears throat> so many people are just pushing content and then like, peace out, Cub Scout, like I'm done. I pushed it and they're not following up. And, you know, it's this idea of, oh, well, I'm not, I don't know this, the whole, <clears throat> sorry. I think even the influencer space is changing. Like you go to an event or you go to a meetup, you may be there with four people, but you have no idea if one of the people that you just talked to could end up being a collaborator down the road or where it's going to go. And so it's, you know, I think the consistency piece is you have to find, pick the one thing that works for you. And I don't care if it's Instagram or a story or you want to do something quick, but it's kind of who you become in that process. I mean, that was really for me, like, just stick with it, stick with it. And if you don't get back on, it's not the end of the world. We're not all that important. You know what I mean? It's like, it happens. I will say with like the admin bar stuff, and this goes back to a, an episode where we talked about having kind of like an accountability partner in things. Mm -hmm. One thing that's helped make this whole thing consistent is it's not just up to me. You know, I, I have somebody else uh, making sure this is getting done too, you know, so, you know, you can't, it's, it's easy to slack off if it's just your own thing, but when you're a partner with somebody in something, so I don't know if there's any opportunities for people with uh, ideas on things like that, but that definitely uh, has made us more accountable for making sure we get stuff done. So, oh yeah, uh, accountability works huge for me too, really yeah, I just, yeah. and I set it up with people that I know won't let me off the hook because it's also easy to go, oh, let's keep each other accountable. Okay, great, and you do it for a couple right. weeks and then yeah. it falls off, right? So I hit a point really quick where I also was like, I have to have implementers around me. I mean, I had like three or four friendships that kind of went sideways and it wasn't a big falling out, but I'm like, this isn't working. I, I cannot keep getting on the Skype or chit chatting with people who are always in the planning to plan to plan to plan phase. Right. I need people above me that are pushing me. Yep. I, I do remember uh, you having to, you mentioning you needed to stop talking about the weather and I did uh, hold you accountable to that for many weeks. I've gotten every, much better. Every time you said the weather, I called you out on it. <laughs> I think I've gotten better. Yeah, I don't think I've heard you say it in a while, so we're good. Because it's not super hot and I'm happy. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. No. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, you, you do have a partner on your new project, which is the uh, Content Creators Planner. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you give us an intro to what this planner is and kind of uh, what gave you the idea to make a physical planner for planning content? Yeah, so, you know, I'm still a pen and paper person. I always have been. I little background like i owned a retail scrapbook store way back in 1998 i was an art student for a while like i've always been you know cue the beastie boys she's crafty right like i whole i totally love that i just have i drew for hours as a kid so it was funny last fall i got into watercolors and i had never done watercolors before um i don't think i was patient enough when i was younger to be honest with you sure. um and then you know so like i my whole dining room table i just left everything out and then my aunt's like oh did, have you heard of the bullet journal i was like no I start looking at the bullet journal. It was too strict for me. Have you guys heard of the bullet journal? No, I heard of it through you, but. Okay. It's, it's, it's pretty intense. You like number the pages, you create a key, there's an index and you're recording. And I was like, okay, this kind of feels like a part-time job. This is a little bit too much. But in the meantime, I loved the paper and I was using markers. I wasn't using a ballpoint pen. So it was like the kid in me came out again. And then I just started using it. And, and I've seen planners, they've kind of blown up, but there's everything is very specific life goals and all this kind of stuff. And for me, the content piece of it, like I've got whiteboards in my office, but I tend to do the whiteboards when I'm doing them. 
and then it's up and I'm like, okay, I might see it. I might reference it, but it doesn't help me in the day to day. I am a calendar person. So we created this because I thought, you know, I really, I want the planning. I need to get it out of my head. I remember better when I write things down and I, I search. there's there, I think there is another content planner, but then she had stickers to use. I'm like, okay, that's going to, I don't have time to peel teeny tiny little social media stickers. And I love stickers. I've got a shit ton. Sorry. So <laughs> I'm like, but it, it's, it's not one of those where I, I wanted to do it. So long story short, I, I thought I was going to do it like in 2019. And I kind of started collaborating with somebody, um, took too long for them to pull the trigger on anything. And after having gone through that with the SAS, I'm like, I'm going to just go ahead and take this back. <laughs> and they were like, okay, sorry to hear that. But I'm like, good luck to you. And then I realized my friend Jody Hirsch, who I've known, we met online five is, is a graphic designer, like been in business 25 years. And so I messaged her like, do you know InDesign? She's like, yeah, what do you need? Like I do it every, I'm in it every day. So that was the end of August. And I start, I drew out all the pages. I would give them to her, not all of them, but most of them. And she then put it into InDesign. But the point with the planner is because it's a lot easier to see. We've set it up. So you're starting with business goals. Like your content should support your business, not and, and I am, when I did the pages, I was like, girl, you have not had a strategy other than publishing. <clears throat> really, that was kind of my strategy as well as, or connecting, right? I think that my content built an audience and all of that. So that's good. So now it's like, okay, what are my business goals? Recurring revenue through Kim Doyle and the content creators planner. So that's it. So everything I do has to support that as well as provide tons of value. Cause I get it. Somebody might want to read a post and they just stay on the email list and buy for me in a year. It is what it is, right? So I get all that stuff. Um, so I just, I wanted a way for people to get it out of their head, look at it instead of sitting down to the blank cursor. And there's so much information like the Kickstarter video, we were trying to spoof the whole funnel hacking whiteboards, all this stuff you gotta do yeah. because it never ends. You have to just own that in this space, you are never friggin' done. Yeah, there's no doubt. And I did get, uh, you know, being part of your group and then being part of Creators Nation, uh, got some some insider looks as you were working on it. And uh, I think we got the we got to look at the PDF before anybody. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys okay. got to see all of it before it was even. Yeah. So I, I can tell you <clears throat> firsthand that this thing, uh, it, it's pretty dang awesome. I, I can't imagine how much planning you had to you know, and, and rewriting you must have gone through to like make all this work because there's so much flow that goes into it and being able to take, like you said, where you start with your goals um, and the way you're planning out things for the month and then for the week and how you can break down like micro content out of bigger pieces and stuff. It's pretty amazing. So I, I want to give everybody the link to go check out your uh, Kickstarter. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about why you went the route of Kickstarter and what you got going on with that. Um, you know, what's funny is I don't necessarily know why I went the route of the Kickstarter. I just thought, oh, this would be great. And it wasn't, it was kind of a visibility piece. Let's test this. Um, and I mean, this all happened literally, you guys, end of August, the Kickstarter went live like December 3rd. So it's been a ready fire aim. <clears throat> we did a lot of research and even the, uh, creation of the planner though, it's kind of been, Jody's been in business 25 years. I've been doing this 10 plus. So it's not like we were like, oh, we like content. Let's make a planner. Right. Sure. So that's why it happened quickly. But the Kickstarter, um, you know, in, in many ways, in order to keep the, it's a, it is a 90 day, I, I have to stop saying quarterly because it's undated, but it's a 90 day planner. And with that, um, you know, the point is that you focus on the first 90 days. So we thought, okay, let's do the Kickstarter. Let's get some visibility going. And that way it's essentially just pre-selling it, right? We could do that off our own site too. Sure. Um, but it's, it's just, it's been interesting. We're going to start running some ads. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have sort of a contingency if we don't hit our funding goal. And I did a lot of research even on the funding goals and, and it's, it's interesting. Cause they're like, you know, don't ask for too much, but because we're printing overseas, we thought, okay, we don't know what customs fees are going to be and all of that. So it, it's, it's been interesting. It's a little exhausting. I'm going to be super honest with you guys. Like it's tiring. We're running live streams all this week, teaching a content strategy, which right. we can then take and use as, as training later. I mean, regardless of the outcome of the Kickstarter, we're moving forward with it. So um, it's, it's been a little, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I think that because this is my ego, I guess. I thought, oh, okay, I've got tons of people that I know, da, 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 all this stuff. This will be a piece of cake. Yeah, people have marketing calendars planned, um, you know, and so I think probably a longer runway would have been better. 
At the same time, I thought, get the planner out going into 2019, which is why I did this. Sure. It's like, who would do this in December, right? Right. The goal was <laughs> I wanted people to know they could start planning their content for, for 2019. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. There's, it's, um, we thought about Indiegogo too, because you get any funds regardless. Um, but I just, I wanted to try it. I, for lack of better, I just wanted to try Kickstarter. <laughs> Well, I definitely encourage everybody to go take a look at everything on there and uh, definitely watch the little video because it is pretty awesome the way y'all uh, troll the, uh, what'd you call them earlier, the the bro marketers. Uh, I, think. I love that term. I do too. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, this is so true. Yeah. I, I think there's a term too for female marketers that are love, light, and blessings all the time too. I don't know what I would call them. And I'm not knocking people for their beliefs or anything, sure. but it's just like, I, I just crave, please be real. You know, it's kind of like, you know, marketers that have hit a certain level and now they realize vlogging and behind the scenes is important, but behind the scenes of the road trip in your Porsche Cayenne doesn't relate to me necessarily. Right. Like I, I know you and I know you've had some challenges in your life and I'm not all about dumping your life onto people's laps but there is an element to this has sucked right and i deal with struggles too i don't know why i went sideways with that but yeah no i think I, you're i think you're 100 percent on point and i think that's why you do have such a big following because you're just you're you all the time and everybody really likes that thank you <laughs> much to like the dogs running around or <laughs> right whatever. i should just bring the baby in here and everything we'll just get <laughs> real real up in here was that that British uh, politician whose little oh, kid came in? Yeah. And they're trying that to that could literally happen to me at any moment. <laughs> yeah. That is one of my fears. I, we're going to be moving hopefully soon, and I, I told him I was going to install a little switch where I could have a little red light outside my door so people wouldn't come <laughs> in. So I got to figure out how to make that happen. I have a piece of paper taped outside my door right now that says "on camera live, dude." Because literally, and I'll be super. My son came in one day. The gardener was here with a bill, and I'm like. Like, try to I'm like, I'm like, I'm on the camera, right? And right. He's trying to write me notes. And so he picks up, I'd had like a washcloth on the desk because my water was dripping. He takes the washcloth and throws it over the camera. Oh my gosh. I'm all, that was not helpful, but it was so <laughs> funny. I'm all, hey, next time. So I'm like, you know, the six foot <laughs> tall son. I'm like, dude, right. do not come in unless you're on fire. <laughs> Whatever. So far I've looked out. They, the, the family has been very helpful on that. We'll see how long that lasts. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we do got to get out of here today to make some way for some other appointments, but we definitely need to have you back on here, Kim, because I don't feel like we got a, enough out of you today. We can always use more Kim Doyle uh, anywhere you go. So Thank hopefully you. you'll come back and talk to us again. Um, give us a, give us a rundown of places where people can find you. I know I mentioned your, your group, but the content creators group, which is awesome and growing and, and, uh, full of value. Give us all the places where we can find you and be involved. Okay. Just, can I add two more things? One, yes. uh, we do have agency packs of the planner too. They make great client gifts. So anybody wants to do that, we've set up a landing page so that you could buy a pack and then you send your client to the landing page where they get instant access to the PDF. We can ship them or we can ship them all to you. But just as an FYI, if you want to get these for your clients, I think it'll make your life easier. And we are going to have a full membership teaching your clients how to use the planner to produce their content. So nice. there's that. Um, yes, I'd love to come back. We could, You know what we should do really quick? Think about it, but like a hot seat. Let's get a web dev on and let's create a content strategy for them. Okay. Kind of it's not a bad idea. That. That, um, that's a great idea. So volunteers, uh, hit me up. Yeah, I would love to do that. You can find me kind of everywhere under kimdoyle.com and it's D-O-Y-A-L, um, content creators planner. Most of my social media is kimdoyle.com. YouTube is, I think everything at this point is now Kim Doyle. I don't think anything is WordPress chick anymore. So I'm pretty easy to find. Great. Yeah. And of course sure. the group, we would love to have you in the group. Yeah, Any the group is awesome. And if you can't, if you're not in a place where you want to support the planner now, any sharing is also super appreciative. Sure. I let's... feel like a popper with my hands. So. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure we get it shared everywhere. And uh, they can go to kimdoyle.com forward slash Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. For anybody who's not uh, watching this live and doesn't see the comments, I, I want to make sure they're able to get to that. So uh, how, how long is the Kickstarter going until? January 2nd. Okay. So all the way to next year. Yeah. <laughs> you got plenty of time. No, you don't plenty get in time. there now. <laughs> No doubt. I hate this time of year when you know everything's uh, about to come crashing in and it's going to be the end of the year and you got to get ready for a whole new one. It's kind of stressful. Yeah. 
I'm just trying. All I can do is one day at a time right now. I nap every day right now. <laughs> <laughs> nap and coffee. That's yep. it. <laughs> it's my life. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate everyone who joined us live today. Of course, this will go out on YouTube and as a podcast. Um, so you can catch it all there if you didn't catch the full thing. And we look forward to having y'all uh, back listening to us next Tuesday, I think, is Christmas already. So we won't be doing a show next Tuesday. <laughs> and then the next Tuesday, when we do sh we do shows on Tuesdays, obviously, uh, the next Tuesday is the first. So we won't be doing a show then. So uh, we'll be doing plenty of stuff in the group. If you're not in a part of the group, go to theadminbar.com forward slash group and you can join in there. I know we got a couple little uh, things planned and we've been doing this thing too. And I know I need to, I, I told everybody to shut up and now I'm rambling. Uh, we've been posting some like random without any kind of warning Zoom links, uh, Matt or myself or both of us and just had people jump in from the group and get on a Zoom call with us. It hadn't been recorded or, or broadcasted or anything, but just getting to know people and hanging out. And it has been super fun. I think everybody that's been part of it has really enjoyed it and, you know, asked us to do it more often. So, yeah, it's uh, make copy on that. Yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. We the other day I did one and we had I don't know, we had people in seven or eight different countries on there. And we, we talked about we talked about web stuff. We talked about politics. We talked about all kinds of stuff, but it was super fun. Uh, so we'll we'll make sure to do all kinds of that stuff while we're not uh publishing shows the next couple weeks so uh matt do you got anything to add to that the only thing i have to add would be that uh, i think there's a lot more to uh to unpack here with kim and yeah. uh Thanks. if anybody's got questions comments anything that they'd like to see the next time kim's on uh put them in the comments and we'll uh we'll we'll definitely talk about that stuff yeah, absolutely. Well, I know uh, you got plenty of stuff to do, Kim. So I appreciate you taking out some time for us. And hopefully everyone will go check out the content creators planner. And I appreciate you taking some time out for us today. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a ton of fun. Awesome. All right, guys, we will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.